for in. So thanks again for coming uh, for today's session. Uh, so I think I'll just start for now. Um, okay, so this, this talk is... Uh, so today will be me and Creating presenting. So I'll start off first. So I'm Alexis. And then I'll pass over the time to Creating. Okay. So this talk is in collaboration with uh, the Stay Prepared Movement by the Masik Foundation. So it's set up uh, to... Um, it Stay Prepared helps to prepare Singapore community for emergencies like major accidents, uh, natural disasters, pandemics, severe haze, or terrorist attacks. So it's supported by the Thomasic Emergency Preparedness Fund, which is managed by Thomasic Foundation. Uh, okay, so before we start, there are some ground rules and information that I have to share with everyone. So Creating and I are from Crest at Viria. Uh, we use under Viria Community Services. Uh, so we believe that this topic is very important because of Singapore's aging population. Uh, there's already an increase in dementia in Singapore and worldwide. So this number can increase even further in the future. So we thought it's important for you know, the community to come together and support people with dementia and their caregivers. So I'll talk a bit more about this uh, in the later slide. Okay, so for this talk, we hope that we won't bore you with our content, but we can guarantee that uh, you will be entertained and you will be involved in this this talk. Uh, so there'll be moments where you have to participate. So please be alert. Okay. I hope uh, everyone will also remain, uh, remember to remain muted during the talk. Uh, but feel free to type in any questions that you have in the chat in the chat function. So our lovely moderator will be monitoring the chat and she'll take note of any questions that you have and we'll address them together at the end of the, the presentation during the QA segment. Okay. So this is also a positive space. So our moderator will remove anyone who types or says anything inappropriate or rude. Okay. So I mentioned before that Hwiting and I are from Crest at Viria. So it, uh, Crest stands for the Community Resource and Engagement Support Team. Uh, so it's a collaborative program together with the Agency for Integrated Care or AIC. Our primary purpose is to support residents uh, 40 and above who are living in the West Coast and Ayer, region, uh, Ayer Raja regions. Uh, we do basic assessments and talks such as this one for dementia and also other mental health uh, issues. Uh, we also do community outreach, uh, early identification and education. Uh, we also aim to link individuals and caregivers to you know, appropriate services and support in the community. We also do some psychoeducation for individuals and caregivers to do things like manage uh, caregiving stress. So you know, recently we had a collaboration with us to teach foreign domestic workers to manage stress of taking care of people with dementia, uh, PWD. So uh, you can check that out on our Facebook page. We also have other talks. Okay. Uh, okay, so now we've come to the segment where everybody has to participate. So our moderator will put up a poll. Okay, so we want to test your knowledge about dementia. So I'm just assuming that, you know, you all have signed up because you are very enthusiastic about dementia and you want to learn more and... Uh, you know, support people with dementia. So uh, we just want to test your knowledge. So if you see the poll, uh, it will be up soon. It will have all the questions on it. So all you have to do is just to select the correct answer, either true or false. Uh, and once you're done, just click submit. So we'll give you about two minutes. Uh, and then after that, we will share and discuss the results. Thank you for the participation. I think uh, we have half, have uh, put in, uh, more than half that brought in your answers. Uh, Maybe you'll we'll give uh, one or two minutes or so to end the poll. Thank you. Great. <laughs> Can everyone see the results? Yes. Okay, great. <laughs> All right. So, okay, we have quite a good uh, range of responses. Uh, okay, so uh, dementia is natural part of aging. So some of you said it was true. Most of you said false. So same for the other two questions. Most of you said false. Okay, so I'll just explain it in the next slide. Okay, you can close. Yeah, we can close the, the poll now. Okay, yeah, so uh, thanks a lot for your answer. So uh, actually the answer for all questions is false. Uh, so yeah, um, dementia is not a part of, a natural part of aging uh, because it, it has more significant effects than uh, what is seen with uh, normal, in a sense, uh, typical old people. I mean, they do forget certain things, but in dementia, it's more uh, impact, more, more pronounced in a sense. Okay. 
Uh, and you know, the second question was dementia only happens to older adults. Uh, and sadly, this is not the case. There's actually uh, early onset dementia, which uh, in Singapore, the youngest uh, diagnosed case was actually 46 years old. Okay. Uh, sadly, dementia is not curable, uh, but the good thing is that symptoms can be managed. So, you know, with the help of like different professionals, so, you know, GPs and organizations like Alzheimer's Disease Association, uh, they actually teach you, um, teach caregivers ways to manage uh, symptoms of dementia. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, uh, changes can be quite sudden in certain forms of dementia. So, for example, vascular dementia uh, actually occurs after a stroke. So, you know, the change in personality and memory and all can occur very quickly. Uh, whereas, you know, with Alzheimer's, it's a bit more progressive. Uh, it, Alzheimer's also uh, affect, uh, dementia also affects uh, individuals differently. So you can see that, you know, different people have different kinds of symptoms and different um, severity. You know, so some people tend to be more aggressive and others, you know, tend to be more confused. Okay. So um, with, with uh, dementia, there's actually a lot of challenges. Uh, both the PWD and the caregivers uh, face a lot of difficulty, you know, at diagnosis and, you know, during the progression of the disease. So every day can be a challenge. Uh, this can result in a lot of different emotions. So the PWD has challenging behaviors that, you know, sometimes caregivers don't know how to manage. Uh, some have limited support depending on their knowledge and finances. Uh, there's also a lack of understanding both for the person with dementia and also, uh, sorry, PWD stands for persons with dementia. Uh, and you know, uh, caregivers don't really know um, much about dementia and how to manage it. Uh, there's also a sense of grief uh, with, you know, with the loss of self for the person with dementia and also, you know, the loss of uh, the loved one for the caregivers. Okay. There are also many other challenges that is associated with, uh, with the diagnosis of dementia, but we won't go into much details in this, this talk. Uh, but these challenges challenges become even more pronounced during uh, a pandemic. So, you know, with the COVID-19 pandemic, you know, especially during the circuit breaker, many centres are closed. And even now when they reopen, you know, there are some limitations, you know, because of social, social distancing measures. Uh, so PWDs and uh, caregivers actually have to adapt to these changes. Um, but what I'm trying to say today is that they don't have to do all this alone. So that's why this talk matters. Learning how to connect with PWD is an important way to actually increase community support for both the PWD as well as the caregivers. So by doing so, we can actually help to reduce caregiver burnout and let uh, PWDs and the caregivers know that, you know, we care for them and we do value them in society. Okay, uh, so I'm sure some people actually have already seen this article. So uh, we're quite lucky that this, this happened just last Wednesday. You know, so we could actually you know, talk about it during this presentation. Uh, so what happened, for those who are not aware of this article, is that uh, there was a person in dementia and her caregiver, who's her son, uh, who had an argument at a handicapped toilet in gym. So I think in you know, a lot of cases, most Singaporeans will be quick to judge. You know, they'll say, oh, why is this son so rude, this mom? Or you know, why is the PWD making so much noise? Uh, but in this case, what happened was the community actually set, uh, stepped up uh, you know, a security guard came over and helped the lady's hand to calm her down. The management actually came down to joke with her in Hokkien. Even staff from a coach shop gave her clothes. And the person who wrote this article, the post, uh, actually gave the uh, auntie her, slip her slippers. Yeah. So you can see that these people uh, showed some kindness to this lady and her son. You know, it not only like helps calm down the person with dementia, but it also gives the caregiver space to calm down. Because it must have been very stressful for him to have, you know, uh, argued with his mother. Yeah. yeah. So, so what I'm trying to say here is that, you know, anyone can be an every, everyday hero like this by just doing small things in situations like this or if you ever encounter someone with, uh, with dementia. You know, so you can help them instead of like just judging them. Okay. So this brings me to my next point about uh, building a dementia-friendly community. So it's actually an initiative by Agency for Integrated Care uh, to create a more caring and inclusive society for P PWDs and their caregivers. So currently in Singapore, we have eight, uh, eight DFCs, uh, but I think we can do better, right? 
we, you know, it would be great if, you know, we can create a Singapore in which every part is covered and everyone feels supported. Okay, so how do we build a dimensional friendly community? Uh, I think you guys are awesome because, you know, you're taking the first step by signing up for this talk. So thank you for that. You know, you're helping to build this dementia friendly community. Uh, you can also do this by, you know, learning more about dementia, uh, keeping an eye out for seniors in your community. It can just be as simple as looking out for your neighbor, elderly neighbors. Okay. Uh, you can also be part of the, you can uh, learn how to interact with TWD more and like uh, be involved in the dementia friendly community initiative. Uh, which is something that we will talk a bit more about at the end of our presentation. Okay, so I think um, everyone is a bit tired of hearing my voice. So I'll pass on the time to my colleague Creating, who will talk more about how can you learn to interact with people with dementia. Hi guys, thank you for <clears throat> thank you, Alexis, for sharing the first segment. Uh, the, the, the image now that you are seeing, right, with an elderly listening to the very nice music and with the OK sign, OK? Uh, um, time travel with me is something I want to talk about. Um, this lady is actually uh, seeking a permission, right, to um, travel, time, uh, travel back time with her as her dementia gets deteriorated. Um, so are you ready? You know, is every one of us ready to, uh, to, to journey with her? Okay, so as what Alexis mentioned earlier about uh, what is dementia and uh, what do we know, uh, all we all we know all we know about dementia is uh, you know it's just a, a medical terms and uh, it it causes brain damages uh, uh, to you know brain dam I mean uh, damages brain cells and uh, but we want to take a step back okay to unpack this word dementia. And we need to talk about how to how then we can uh, create a more person centric approach when managing a person with dementia, which in short uh, is called PWD. Okay, so with now the understanding uh, that I share with you, like what is our approach, uh, we will now proceed um, to on on some of the ways to enhance our communications with our PWD. Okay. So approaching a PWD, uh, really golden rule, uh, when you approach a, a, a person with a dementia, okay, be it a caregiver or a stranger, it's very important that uh, we ensure that uh, when uh, it's, a, it, it's, it's important to approach them from the front and uh, don't give them a scare. You know, uh, 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 when you come forward, you have face, face to face with the person with dementia, and uh, you know, interact with them um, through um, going towards to, to look at them. And next, right, is to introduce by your name, introduce yourself to, to them. And thirdly is to address them uh, as the name that they prefer to be addressed. So a lot of times we, we tend to say, Akong Ama, or we say, Uncle Auntie, okay? But is, is it something that we want to, you know, uh, uh, do they really want to be called like this? Okay, so it's something to think about it. You know, ask them, uh, uh, what, what do you want? What, uh, how can I address you? Uh, how can I, uh, 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 what is the preferred name to be called? And give the PWDs time to respond to you. You know, it takes a while maybe for them to uh, 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 come back and to uh, give them some time to uh, respond. Um, also, the next step is actually to uh, provide a comforting tone of voice. Uh, by not uh, being too uh, impatient, don't sound too impatient, uh, be very comforting and ask, uh, how are you and how is things going to, for you? And lastly is to, again, uh, really has to emphasize this, uh, be patient, be flexible and understanding and try not to uh, uh, correct them at a very confusing stage. Uh, by, by, by not correcting, we kind of like, we, we will, we will uh, it, it will be kind of, we have to uh, understand what they are going through at, at that very moment. Okay, so it's, this is the golden rule to approach uh, PWD. Okay, next. Um, so to enhance your, uh, to enhance communications with uh, PWDs, um, so that you can continue to have meaningful uh, and engagement with the PWD, so these are some of the golden, uh, some of the rules, I mean, some of the things to uh, observe, some of the tips to observe uh, in order to con con have a meaningful engagement with PWDs. So first of all, right, 
um, avoid the words remember. I think this is something that uh, we cannot get over, can't get rid of it. Okay, but then you know, day-to-day uh, -day conversation, let's try to eliminate the words remember. It may sound like you are challenging her memory, which is something that uh, we, 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 do, we do not want to. And you can, you can try to use uh, 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 this way and you can ask, um, did Sarah, your daughter, call? So in a way that uh, it's not very confronting and uh, will we'll let a lot of the uh, PWDs who have some time to think about it. Oh, Sarah, my daughter, who is she? So allow them to have the time. And secondly, is to uh, share, their rea share the reality of the PWD. So embracing their current reality of the uh, PWDs, provide them with comfort and assurance that, uh, she, that it's, it's okay to be at the current, current present moment. And many caregivers ask, um, so are you telling me, uh, Hui Ting, so are you telling me to lie to the, to the PWD? And my answer usually is yes, okay? Imagine, right, uh, you have the only memory left with you, which are, uh, and, and uh, the memory is actually like you are unmarried, okay? And you are, you are single, you are, you are a carefree person. And, but then this particular person, someone keep coming to you and say that, hey, you have a daughter, right? You remember, you have a daughter named Sarah, you remember? And forcing you to accept you have a daughter. How would that feel? And do you feel confused? Do you feel frustrated? Do you feel a sense of loss? Yeah. At that very present moment, PWD is going through a lot of things that to uh, recall. Do I have really have a daughter? Do I really get married? Am I really get married? Who is who am I married to? So all this confusion will come to her. And you can see her uh, getting more and more overwhelmed. And this is not what we want. Okay, so again, to share the reality of the PWD is very important. So that uh, and share that, that, that part where she's unmarried, you can ask her, oh, so you're unmarried now, so what are you doing? What is your work? What do you work? And what, what do you earn for a living? Yeah, so to strike that conversation. Um, thirdly, right, it's actually to speak slowly, take a breather from each uh, sentence, uh, be observant of their facial expression. They may like look uh, confused uh, of what you're trying to say, uh, giving them time to catch up uh, they may have difficulties catching up with uh, your pace, okay? So slow down as you speak. Um, next is to uh, speak in a sentence that includes only one idea. And uh, with us, very fast pace, right? We want everything to be packed. Uh, uh, and and uh, in a sentence, we want to look down a lot of information. But again, when you speak to PWDs, let's try to have a simple sentence with only one idea or one objective of what you want to bring across. Okay, keeping the sentence short and use familiar words for PWD. It's very important. So uh, it, can, it, it will be example like, uh, if the PWD is always remember Sarah as baby. Okay, Sarah equals baby, right? And whenever she, she's familiar with the words, uh, you know, instead of using Sarah, the name, you can actually name, uh, is baby coming home tonight? You know, you know get her to, uh, get her to understand, Get her to uh, be familiar with the words and then she can recall and then it's, it's easier to communicate and to uh, send out your message and the questions that you want to ask. Uh, next, right, is to ask one question at a time. You know, a, a lot of times we, we, we give, do you want this, do you want this, do you want this, but then at, at, towards the end, uh, it becomes more and more confused for a person with uh, uh, for the PWDs. So uh, give them an option, uh, this or that. And, and, and you, will, you will give them uh, with a narrow choice, you will either A or B or yes or no. Okay. Next, right, is to monitor your body language. You know, uh, when we, when we uh, study, right, a lot of times we, we, we understand that uh, a lot of percentage is actually through the body language and the spatial expressions and the tone of voice, yeah, which uh, another person will capture in. Therefore, be mindful whenever you are uh, uh, agitated or you feel very angry, uh, this also will be being also will be very easily picked up by PWDs. Yeah. So uh, with that, then they will mirror your your anger. Your they will mirror uh, whenever you are upset. So uh, so it's not really advisable to do that lah. So if you are really uh, seeing yourself uh, 
the anger is coming out, you're experiencing quite an overwhelming step aside and get yourself being cooled down first. Yeah. Next, right, is to be at the level of maintaining eye contact so that uh, you, don't, you don't stand and uh, talk to the uh, PWDs, but then, you know, go down to the, uh, the eye level to, to talk. When, uh, and um, this will be more you're showing, you're, you're showing your respect to the uh, PWDs. Okay, next is to actions, uh, use actions to support your words. So, uh, for example, you, you want to bring a uh, PW out for maybe doctor's appointment and uh, you need to prepare her. So sometimes you just point to the appointment card, show them the appointment card, or you can show them that uh, the, the coat that, you know, the, the jacket that the PWD always wore when she's out to kind of like prepare her. Yeah. So next, right, is to um, tell them what you are doing, what you're going to do. So early preparation is very crucial. So making sure that, that they're aware of your intentions uh, uh, before you do it. So for example, take for example, you are planning for a staycation in uh, Sentosa, okay? So uh, uh, if, uh, it's a family staycation and uh, there's a calendar, always use of calendar to um, show them, show the PWDs that you're going for this uh, vacation, uh, everyone will be going, who will be going, and show them a picture of, you know, really holiday, that kind of uh, picture. And then uh, every week, constantly remind them that you are going for this and we will not be at home for which date to which date. So again, this part will keep her uh, prepared. Early preparedness uh, will then will make her uh, uh, less anxious and less stressed so that it won't be coming to her like very unexpected, unexpected movement. Or sudden. Uh, next, right, show and tell, you know, uh, bring objects or bring uh, old memories uh, to see if they draw any connections. So it can be, you can, you can bring a, a photo of a rooster, you know, you know, now we have a lot of uh, 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 a photo of rooster for the PWD to see and to see that it, last time, do you have, do you see this before at your kampong area? So uh, along the line that uh, draw some connections to, to, uh, into our communications and uh, your conversations with them. Lastly, right, is to uh, try to elicit out their wisdom and they still, uh, they, they still have uh, things to share and uh, advice to give, you know. Um, and at times, right, uh, if they, they felt that they are being valued, that is also a very important part. So when you have like uh, your children and want to interact with uh, the PWDs, uh, allow them to share their wisdom to the children, to the next generation, so that from there, they will uh, feel that they are being respected and they felt being valued. Yeah? Okay. So now, after sharing the 12 tips, right, um, I hope everyone will still here with me. Okay? So uh, now, right, we would like to invite you to watch a very short uh, conversations and role play. There will be a total of two role play. And uh, with the role play, every end of the role play, we will need your help to annotate. Okay, so by saying annotate, right, is that to stamp uh, uh, the, the things that you observe during our role play. So while we are acting, you can identify some of the communications could have been improved or which has been done well. Uh, do annotate it. And then after role play, we can actually, uh, you can also type in the chat box if you have more things to share, then, uh, uh, then we will discuss further. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, Alexis, are you ready? Yes. Any questions in the chat group? No, right? <laughs> okay, and, and, and a bit of disclaimer, both of us are not real actor or actress, or bit actress, okay? So, uh, please bear with us. Uh, but then we are, we are trying to uh, uh, show some examples that, so that you can also pick up some of the tips on uh, just now what I shared earlier on, okay? So if anyone don't know, annotations, right, um, is on top of the, uh, this view options. When you click on the view options on the top of the uh, presentations, uh, the Zoom, right, there's this called, this called annotate, okay? Then when you annotate, there's this thing called stem. Then you can have star star or you can have heart shape. Yeah, this thing will come out with. Yes, good job. Okay, so uh, moderator, please help me clear away <laughs> the annotations. Okay, great. Ken, so Alexis, you ready? Yeah. 
Should I start? Yes, take it away. Okay, now we are at the scenario that we are in a hawker center. As you all can hear the voice, right, of a hawker center, it's very noisy, uh, it's very hectic. So I, I bring my PWDs to the hawker center. Ama, what you want to eat? Ah? Do you want to eat Hokkien Mee? The Hokkien Mee, I think not bad. Lah. But then the fried rice here also, also tastes very good. I like it too. Huh? Uh, but then uh, the fish soup also good. I think you eat before. Remember? You eat before and you no, say very I, nice. I don't know. You don't know? Uh, but I rush in time. Like, I only have one hour lunch time. Can you, can you tell me what you want? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Why you don't know? Why everything you so don't know? Yeah, I don't know lah. I don't want to eat. I want to go home. Ayah. Ayah. Okay. And so the role play ended. Okay. Um. So if anyone uh, get it, okay. <laughs> Annotate now. Thank you. Okay, I see some annotations coming in. Uh, avoid the words remember. It's very clear, yes. Speak slowly. Limited, limit your sentence with one key objective. Yes, yeah, someone annotate that. Um, ask one question at a time. That's good. How about the body language? How about the facial expression that I, I showed just now? Yeah. I, I, I look, I, I sound a bit uh, very agitated and impatient. Okay. That's good. That's good. Well done. Okay, so uh, uh, there's four key things that uh, we want to highlight uh, on this uh, role play. Okay, firstly, right, you can hear that uh, uh, at the hawker center, it's very noisy, it's very, it's very distracting. Okay, and when you talk to PWD, sometimes she will get distracted by all the noises. Um, you know, uh, distracted by all the noises. And it's also, it's, it's good that you can... Um, Bring them aside if the PWDs is okay to bring them aside to a quieter place or quieter corner to ask. And the part where we uh where we talk about the uh remember thing, right? So I keep on emphasizing, you remember, do you remember? It kind of very uh it kind of, it, it it becomes very uh challenging to her, to her and she's trying her best to recall, but then I go so fast and I I I I kept, you know, uh, emphasizing, do you remember or not? Like, I mean, I'm pretty on pressure on her. And um, the part of mirror, mirroring, uh, which is the body language that I'm showing, and, and the part where I'm very, very agitated, right? She also can mirror me. And she then uh, towards the end, she also, I mean, the PWs also give up, correct? And you can see that she started to be very agitated and she don't want to eat anymore. If it's a hassle, then why, why we are here, right? Then she also wants to go back home because she's very anxious. Okay. And another thing that uh, you want to uh, you know, keep a sentence one time, I mean, keep, keep a sentence short and with one objective. So maybe you could, if you, if you know uh, your PW, uh, your, you know for loved ones, right? What she usually eat, you can actually give her uh, two options, then she chose one, or she's a very confusing stage. You are, you are aware that what she wants to eat, you can actually order the food that she wants. Okay, so with that, thank you for the um, uh, participation. Uh, moderator, can you yeah, clear all? Okay. Uh, moderator, is there any questions by someone? Or they need help? No, huh? Okay, good. Again, thank you. So we will carry on our next uh, role play. <laughs> I think very, we are very excited with the role play. Yeah, super uh, fun. <laughs> okay, so let's start. I think, have you seen my glasses? I think you may have put them on the table side of your bed. No lah, I think you yeah. must have taken it. Because I don't see it. Where is it? Oh, okay. Uh, okay, maybe I will show you where we, where we put the glasses. You want to do it together? Okay. Okay, let's go over there. And let's, I, I bring to one place to see uh, the information that I put on the fridge. It stated, uh, Ama glasses is always at the side of the bed. Can Ama's you read that? Can glasses. you read? 
are always mm. at the side of the bed. Mm, oh, mm. Okay. Remember? Shall we go and find it now? Together? Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's your glasses. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. it's there. Yeah. Great Thank job. You. Yay. Yay. Good job. Okay. Then, yeah. So, we ended this uh, role play. Uh, maybe you want to annotate. People are start annotating. Show and tell. Um, tell them beforehand what you intend to do. Good. Oh, I accidentally said about remember, right? So some of you annotate it. <laughs> um, share their reality. Don't dot correct them. Yes. Mm -mm. That's very good. Any, any, anyone else want to you know, share any deeper thoughts about this uh, role play? No? Nope. Okay. Anything else, uh, Alexis, you want to highlight for this role play? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think we think covered most of it, but I think like these, these examples are not exactly how reality is, as in how it's going to be in real life, but uh, I think uh, as long as you genuinely care for them and like really try your best, I don't think there's really a wrong answer, a wrong response. Yeah, you know, any anger or, or disagreements between you and the PWD can always be managed later on. Yeah, so don't worry too mm. much about it. Yeah, so thank you all for the participations of the annotations. I hope it is something new to me and for you that, you know, the annotations uh, uh, in Zoom. Okay, so as what Alice mentioned, right, as, as um, individual could experience dementia very differently, therefore the tips mentioned are form of guidelines and remember uh, and, remind, and reminder for all, for every one of you to support our loved ones. But it doesn't mean that it's only uh, that all tips or, you know, uh, and it doesn't mean that uh, the tips are all suitable for every one of you. Uh, and you may have a better solutions or better uh, uh, suggestions uh, on how to support your loved ones. And many of these tips are, are here to widen your perspective and knowledge. Okay. Uh, always remember to reach out to uh, uh, your support, your informal support, so your families, um, your, uh, your doctors, um, and to share if you, are, if you are feeling drained and overwhelmed with the caregiving duties. Yeah? So now, right, um, we would like to share with you uh, a short uh, film directed by Roston Tan in 2010 that will pretty much sum up the uh, the uh, some of, the, some of the communication tips that we mentioned earlier and the message is very clear and it's really for us to see uh, dementia in another in a different light so i want you to uh, watch it uh, and you know any any insights of you any thinking uh, um, any thoughts that come to you you may share it towards the end during our q a yes我想说呢你还记得吗你是最调皮的背了书包去逃学还去抓打架椅你知道吗我最疼的人就是你
，我要去喂鸡了。养鸡最重要的饲料是椰丝、甲汞、米糠，要鸡长得肥。米糠的分量是最重要。咕咕咕咕咕咕咕咕咕咕咕咕咕咕咕咕咕咕。阿 K， 你来帮我好吗？我一个人做不来。我不管你是谁。Uh, always drew tears. Always drew tears in me. I mean, I whenever I watch it, I it felt very connected, uh, with the you know with the act inside, and uh, it it says out quite a lot of important message about this uh dimension and uh the part where we embrace their reality and you know journey with them like what we mentioned earlier, you know time travel, travel back with them. Um, to embrace their 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 current reality, uh, and do you think that the the grandson is Aking? No, right? Aking is uh is his uh, son, uh and and you can see that the grandson didn't reject him or didn't correct him, but then uh continue with the uh conversation that he has and he, to share. I think that's the be- most beautiful uh films that I see uh in, in, in local productions lah. So yeah. So something to think about it and ponder, yeah. So, uh, okay, coming back to the sorry, I need to come back. Uh, come back to the presentations. Um, how then we can uh, if we don't have uh any uh caregiver, I mean we don't have any PWTs. Um, how then we can play a part as a uh strangers as a you know a individual in a community, right? Like what uh Alexis mentions to build a uh, more dementia friendly community. So there's this kind and care approach that. Uh, AIC uh, has been, you know, trying to uh, sell this idea to everyone. Okay, um, which is I think is very important. So keep right, K is to keep a lookout. Um, look out for any uh, uh seniors who are lost, look confused, um, speaking incoherently sometimes, and you know, uh, and some some acting out of some behaviors or wandering off. Uh, uh keep a lookout for that interactions with care. So we talk about uh like what we have shared earlier on, be clear, be concise, be patient, you know, give them the trust and assurance. Uh yeah. So and right is to notice, notice their needs and offer help. So there's this uh in the image itself, there's this uh special needs card. Okay, so for any uh, uh person with disabilities or person with dementia, they can actually uh mm, request for this card from actually in April, I guess. And from this card, right, there's a uh, next of kin included. So you can see that if they are holding this card, right, uh, there will be a next of kin contact number. So lastly, right, is to tell for help and um, call the next of kin if you see this uh, person, uh, the, the PWDs are uh, um, going confused or, you know, wander off and may not know how to go back home. Yeah. So, yeah. And if you can't get information itself, right, uh, you can show them your own ICs. And show it to the PWDs that do you have this similar, this kind of orange color card. So if they you, if they're able to produce that to you, right, you will know where they stay. You can send them home if it's convenient for you. If not, then you can bring them to uh, nearest police stations and to uh, uh, seek uh, further help for them. Yeah. Okay. Next. So again, uh, to create a very, uh, to create a, a DFC, right, dementia friendly community, very importantly, we have to uh, uh, down, uh, these are three simple steps to do it. Uh, first of all, is to download a dementia friendly app. 
uh, from your phone, in your phone. And this dementia friendly app, right, uh, there's this uh, uh, component where you can post up your loved one's uh, photo in case that uh, he or she uh, may wander off or, you know, get lost. And this uh, information will then help, will then uh, be spread around the person who registered as a volunteer uh, to keep a lookout within the community for you. So you can find them uh, very easily. Yeah. Then the next thing is to forget us not is a uh, in movement and initiative by uh, Lian's Foundations and also ADAs. Uh, and it's tons of videos about uh, uh, how to support uh, uh, caregivers and PWDs and really uh, caregivers coming forward to share about their actual uh, uh, experiences taking care of person with dementia. Okay, lastly is to, you know, a very quick one is just to spread the news and, you know, uh, let everyone know of your, your friends know about this uh, movement and also the dementia family community. And just for information, the forget us not right in the subscribe in the YouTube itself, the subscribing uh, uh, numbers right is only about hundred over, so it's quite sad, right? We, we know that there's increasing uh, 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 silver tsunamis. I mean, there will be more uh, elderly, there will be more caregivers, but then uh, there is also only so so little people that is has subscribed and understand about dementia in depth. So I hope that um and, and that is the reason reason why that we have to come forward to talk a bit. I'll talk to you more about dementia and to create the awareness. Yeah. Uh, next. So if you know of your neighbors or um, a seniors could uh, suspect, you could suspect a bit of uh, dementia or could be experiencing some, uh, sign, some early sign of dementia, you know, seek consent of the individual or the family members to be referred to appropriate services. Uh, and tell them that you know they can go to nearest family clinics, polyclinics to get support. And if they are, uh, if, and if, if they are staying within the boundaries of ours, which is uh, West Coast and Ayurveda, you can actually email to us or call us up. Uh, we can do a, a screening for the individual. And again, uh, if it's uh, uh, if you see that the PWs are in harm, in danger, please call nine nine five to support and to help them. Uh, to send them to a nearest A and E, yeah, okay. Yes, thanks. So, uh, other useful hotline. Okay, so for consultations of cases, sometimes you are unsure, uh, and you are not within the service boundary of ours. Uh, fear not. Okay, there's this uh, uh hotline one eight hundred six six five zero six double. 6060, okay, which is the AIC hotline, they will then uh, refer you to the uh, next, uh, uh, sub the, the services that uh, is within your service found to me. Lah. And there are other counseling hotlines for the caregivers. Um, so for um, uh, a VCS, we have this counseling hotline. Yeah, it's operating from 10 to 5 p.m. So for any caregivers who may experience some, may be experiencing some uh, caregiver stress and um, some family dispute and all this thing, you can always call uh, the hotline and in Mandarin there's care corners. Uh, there are other resources too. So if you are uh, preparing to uh, uh, be a caregiver, um, there's this mobile e-locator. There are uh, you know you can find out who is the service provider nearby and what are the locations, what's the contact number, so that you can you can search it. And go respite, go respite is a uh, uh, res. Sorry, Go Respite is a uh, program by, initiated by AIC. So you are currently caring for a, a person uh, with PWDs and you may need uh, some, a few weeks off or uh, you know, a, a time for yourself to take a break. You can actually place uh, the person, uh, the PWDs in a, uh, a temporary uh, house in a temporary nursing home and so that you can also uh, have some uh, respite of, uh, for yourself. Okay? So yeah, that's about it for talks today. Oh, okay, and we are going to some of the questions and answers. Alexis, come. <laughs> and again, uh, me and Alexis, we are not the expert, you know, in, in this uh in this uh forum itself. Okay, but if you have any uh, uh inputs and you have anything, you know, feel free to raise up your hands and our moderator will let us know. Then we will let we we'll unmute your mic and you can share. Okay. So, uh, first question, how does dementia affect the personality of the patient? Okay, uh, I mean, if I'm understanding this question correctly, I think it's not that dementia as a disease 
uh, changes people's personality. But because dementia, uh, it actually causes the deterioration of, of the cells in the brain. So, so that's what causes like some of the memory loss and, you know, what makes us uh, who we are, like what makes me Alexis is what memories I have, uh, the experiences that I have. So, you know, in losing that memory, you start, you start to lose who you are. Yeah, and you know, there's also other things, you know, like um, not being able to move around on your own. So that frustration also like, like results in a change in personality that quite a lot of people do see with people with dementia. Hmm. Anyone else would like to give your inputs or uh, currently are caregivers now and would like to share? Yeah, I don't think so. Okay. Now you can move to the next question. Okay, so the next questions are, um, are the first sign of dementia always forgetfulness or is it a change in uh, one's behavior and personality? Um, I guess for this, right, uh, not always. I would say not always the first sign would be forgetfulness. Uh, it could be a change of a uh, certain behavior that usually, uh, so it can be something that uh, uh, the buttoning, buttoning of clothes, uh, suddenly this person have difficulties buttoning uh, their, their button clothes. Okay, so it, it, can, be, it can be quite a lot of uh, uh, different, uh, a change of behavior that could, be some of the early science, science symptoms. Lah. But then uh, uh, with that, uh, it's always good to go back to your uh, GPs or the regular GPs that you always see or polyclinics and to tell the doctors about some of the science symptoms. So it did, within the GP itself, right, they do have, uh, or polyclinics they do have uh, examinations for uh, uh, some screening uh, going on for the, uh, the elderly to screen that whether do they have any uh, dementia, early sign of dementia. Oh, do that answer the question? So first sign doesn't mean that it's, uh, it has to be forgetfulness. Lah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so third question, uh, why dementia can't be cured? Can medications help? You want to take that? Yeah, okay. So uh, dementia can't be cured. So what medication and therapy does is actually to manage some of the symptoms that are associated with dementia. So you can't, so at this stage, our medical technology isn't good enough to regrow brain cells. Uh. So unfortunately, uh, once that has been lost, you know, it's not going to be gained. Uh, but there's always ways to like uh, manage uh, how fast in a sense. Like, I mean, it really depends on what kind of dementia. So again, go back to your GP to see what you can do to improve the life of your, of your person with dementia. Mm. I think uh, adding on, right, uh, medications-wise, uh, it will be more on managing some uh, challenging behavior of the uh, PWDs. So uh, there are also medications to slow down the, uh, the dementia, uh, the deterioration process. Yeah, so again, go back to the GP if you are unsure about that. Uh, okay, so the next question. Um, what is, what is the alternative if you can't, if you cannot take care of your loved ones as PWDs? So, sorry, so uh, the question is, um, is there any alternative in care arrangement if you are the main caregivers and you cannot take care of the PWDs? Am I right? You can actually type on the chat box or you can unmute your mic if the person who asked this. Sorry? Oh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. So, okay. so alternative care arrangements. Mm. So like what we mentioned earlier, the Go Respite uh, uh, program, that you can actually uh, write into AICs and to uh, request for such uh, alternative care for your loved ones. Yeah. So mainly, I think first step is actually to look into your uh, family, nu nuclear family, to actually check is there anyone can take over the care duties for a period of time. And if no, uh, then next, next step is to, you know, uh, to go into the part where uh, you can go to AIC to check in on the Go Respite uh, program. Yeah, they will actually give you suggestions or uh, it can be, you know, uh, the PW is staying in a nursing home, a temporary area, or um, they have someone to uh, uh, visit your house. La, but then that will be very costly also. La. So it depends on your uh, uh, situations and what do you prefer. Yeah, okay. So, uh, did I answer the questions? Anything on the app, Alexis? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, if you, you know, um, 
yeah, if you're writing to AIC, you can uh, look into long-term care options for uh, your person with dementia. So there are certain nursing homes that are more uh, designed to care for people with dementia. Uh, I mean, if you're a Singapore citizen or PR, I think there's like subsidies and things like that. That's something that you can uh, write into AIC to find out more. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, so the next question is how to subscribe to Forget, forget Us Not. Uh, so in a YouTube, right, there's this uh, ring button. Uh, maybe moder our moderator, can you do something? <laughs> can you do some magic over there? Uh, paste the print screen of our, uh, the, the, the subscribe then with the bell button. Uh, so in a YouTube itself, right, YouTube channel, there's this part where you can subscribe it. Um, and you can just click on the subscribe button. Lah. So forget us not, uh, it's just a channel, so you can go in and uh, type the, 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 the name itself and subscribe. It is a bit hard for a moderator to, to do that. I can actually show on my phone. Let me just sure. get the YouTube channel out. Okay, yeah. so we will come back to that question. Huh? Okay, so is RT the only therapy used for dementia? Uh, I'm assuming RT stands for reminiscence therapy. Is that right? The person that uh, questioned this? Okay. Ah, okay, yes. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah correct. Uh, actually, um, there are others. I mean, it's not exactly meant to treat dementia, but it's meant to uh, help the person in dementia remember a bit more about their life uh, and to invoke some happy feelings for them, you know, things that they used to like in the past. Uh, you know, usually they use like uh, old pictures or, you know, old music that the person used to like. I mean, other things that are good for dementia would be probably exercise, eating well, uh, very regular things uh, that will keep your body healthy. Uh, in some cases, it does help slow down the progression of the disease as well. But I think it really depends on what your GP has to say about it. There are certain types of dementia where, you know, some, certain things are just not suitable. Hmm. Okay, so the next question is, uh, what are the stages of dementia? Um, there are three stages uh, from what we know, uh, from what we, uh, what we know. So there's this uh, uh, mild, mild stage, uh, moderate to severe stages. So in total, there are three uh, stages from what we know. Yeah. Alexis, you want to add that? Uh, okay, uh, maybe I'll finish up this. Uh, question first, then I will repeat mm. for Tina because I think she asked what does RT stand for. Mm. Uh, okay, so stages of dementia, yeah, that's three general general stages. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's more or less quite similar like in terms of the symptoms, but the difference is just how severe and how uh, severely impacted the person is by those symptoms. So like in the earlier stages, maybe they, there are times where they do remember certain things and I'm sure they forget it, but in the later stages, it's more like, you know, there's no way they're going to remember something. Yeah. Mm. And sadly is that uh, a lot of times the, the diagnosis comes uh, late, late. So sometimes uh, there, there are statistics stated that mm -hmm. um, there are more, uh, when the person is in a moderate stage uh, and family then realize something is wrong and then, you know, send them to uh, doctors to check which usually that time is pretty uh, 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 pretty late. La. So if it's in a moderate stage already, uh, quite a lot of things that uh, we can't uh, work with the PWDs uh, when, he, when he or she is still in the early stage, right? We can still uh, um, try our best to uh, uh, make some connections and etc. cetera. Um, while in a moderate stage, it's pretty tough. La. So it's always, always remember to uh, highlight this, this part where we... Um, Early diagnosis is always very crucial and important. Yeah. Okay, so the last question is, how can we convince a seniors to go for dementia testing if it's high resistance, even not going to the doctor for normal consultations? Wow. Mm. Uh, like what we mentioned earlier in the, in the presentation, uh, what lies is always a... Uh, it's, not, it's not always the way, but then it's, uh, if it's benefiting the uh, elderly, right, uh, it's okay to tell white lies. Yeah. So uh, going somewhere and to meet someone, uh, then 
this someone can be uh, uh, you know, a doctor, but then saying other kind of issues of hers. Um, it's also one of the ways to uh, get this person uh, to, be, uh, to be seen. La. But with that, right, we also must come with a mentality that why we want them to be diagnosed la, in the first place. Is it impacting you? Is it impacting the life of the family? Or, 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 or is it what, what is it so? Yeah, so we have to voice down back to uh, the, the, the impact and also um, uh, does it matter uh, to, to the entire family itself. La. So did I bring that clear? Alexis, maybe you want to add that? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I think there's really nothing I can add on for this point. <laughs> Yeah, so it can be as easy as, or maybe she, he had a fever, then go and see doctor, that kind. Then, then you can then follow up with the doctor about this. Uh, uh, you have suspecting that he could have dementia, or why, 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 and all this thing. Okay? Can dementia be prevented? The last question. Yes. Uh, yes and no. Yes and no. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so uh, like we mentioned before, uh, so with vascular dementia, this is caused by a stroke. So uh, the reason why there's a sudden change in behavior is because the person probably had multiple mini strokes. Uh, and the latest one is the one that's causing the sudden change in their abilities and their memory. Yeah, so uh, that one can't be prevented because we, we can't really tell if someone's going to get a stroke in the future or not. Yeah, with uh, regular uh, Alzheimer's disease, um, I think there are some studies that show that if you remain active and... Um, you know, uh, have a regular exercise, be healthy, uh, keep your mind active, you can slow down the progression of dementia. So like you might have a predisposition to develop dementia, but by doing all these things, you can, uh, you know, develop the symptoms a bit later or like the progression of it will be slower. Mm. Okay, with that, sorry, we are mindful about the time. So sorry that we are delaying the presentations. So over here, the forget us not, uh, in the YouTube channel, you can just click on that. Just tap on forget us not. Then the button, the subscribe button is there. Number two. Thank you, moderator, for doing this. Yes, thank you. Yes. You can see there's an increase la, of numbers. Two, two, one, eh, two zero one subscriber now. <laughs> but it's an awareness that we need to yeah we need to create or. Okay. Mm. Uh, yeah. So link to the Stay Prepared movement is actually this My Mental Health website. So we know that the COVID-19 pandemic can be quite challenging uh, for people with dementia and also their caregivers. Uh, so please visit the website so you can see it on the screen. Uh, you can go there to learn about caregiving tips and coping strategies to manage like, any kind of stress that comes with taking care of people with dementia. Lastly, we have our feedback form. Okay. So uh, yeah, I really appreciate. Thank you all for you know, attending uh, this evening with us. Uh, it has been about, I think, an hour or so, and I, I think we, we uh, overrun a bit. So we would love to have your feedback. And um, this discussion forum, how is it? Uh, are you able to make uh, uh, some of your um, uh, questions and all these things? So how can we improve in our next uh, discussion forum? Okay, so scan uh, the QR code and give us your feedback before leaving, the, leaving this uh, Zoom. So uh, yeah. uh, as a friend, how can we help her? Because now I have an elderly friend. We suspect she has dementia. She left her things. She go to the market, left her things there. The next moment, she said they are all disappeared. Another occasion, she took the wrong bus. Mm -hmm. So as a friend, how can we help? Uh, okay, so as a friend, how can you help, right? It's really, yeah. um, it, it is, are you, you are close to her, right? She listens to you and she... Uh, not really listen, like say, sometimes mm. uh, we talk and she doesn't answer our question directly, you know? Mm, she mm. will deviate, say something, I should say like, he's in a world of her own. We ask mm. this and she her answer is something else. She mm. probably occupy her mind and she'll be saying the same thing. Uh, can and I help I, answer that? Sure. Yeah. Yes. Please. Hi, Tina. Yeah. Uh, my name is Sandra. Yeah. 
Uh, yes. Thank you for looking out after your friend. I, I think that's very kind of you. Uh, can I know? <laughs> if, can I know if uh, your friend has got family members? Yes, she's living with her family, son, daughter-in-law. Okay. Then children. It'd be, it'd be good for you to maybe connect with the the family members and get her to go to uh to to get the diagnosis done at the polyclinic. Uh, she's a she's not uh, not a Singaporean, you know. She's okay. a Malaysian PR. So yeah, yeah. So they still can go to the polyclinic, right? I see. Yeah, okay, I don't know. Don't know they are willing or not because I'm not close to the <laughs> family well, members. If, anything, you, if, if you if you yeah. think that you need further support, uh, you can write to oh. us or call us at uh-huh. our Crest headline, uh, Crest email. Okay. You can you uh-huh. can actually call us if the if you further help is needed. To uh, write in, do you say or call? Do you say? Yeah, you can either call to look for us or you can contact us uh, at the press uh-huh. email. Yeah. Okay. Mm, yeah. Because mm-hmm. one thing, she's, she's just, although she's living with her family, we feel that she's all alone, you see? Every day mm. in the room, all alone. Sure. Yeah, she's very lonely. Yeah. Yeah. I think very importantly, Tina, you, uh, yeah. I mean, you show your concern, you be there for her. Mm-hmm. And yeah. you know, give her the listening ear that she needs. Also, it's also a way to support her together. Yeah. And uh, once you get that trust, right, maybe you can ask her, hey, why not let's talk to someone? Then that's the time where you can uh, email us yeah. and let us know more about her. Okay. And then from okay. there, we can you know, talk to her and you know, try our best to also convince yeah. her to seek for further okay. help. Mm? All right. Mm. Thank you, Tina. Okay. Oh, welcome. Mm. Yeah. See you. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you. So thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank so you. Much. Mm. So you, Alexis. Huh? Mm. Yeah. Very thank informative. You. Mm. Okay. Good night. Good night. Good night, guys.